Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. Today, we're going to be solving some inequalities using the graphing method. So we're going to have a system of inequalities and we're just going to be graphing them. So let's get into it. Um, so the first thing you need to be aware of is making sure it is in y equals or greater than, doesn't matter if it's an actually an equal sign, mx plus b or mx minus b format. And uh, these for the first part are, okay? So we have y greater than 4x minus 3. We are going to plot a point at the y-intercept at negative 3 right here. Rather. And then a slope of positive 4. So it's going to go from this point up by 1, 2, 3, 4, and over by 1. And then we're going to continue it. We're going to go up by 1, 2, 3, 4, and over by 1, just so we get some consistency going on. Now we need to be careful when before we draw that line, we need to make sure that it is in fact supposed to be a solid line. And in this case, it's not. If it does not have the equal sign underneath, it is not going to be a solid line. So I am not going to include a solid line here. I'm just going to do a dotted line. I'm going to do or a dash line. I'm going to do a dash line. Dash, 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 dash. So it looks like that. Okay, and then we can do the next one before I shade. I'm going to end up shading, but I'm going to shade last. So here we got y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. The y-intercept is 3. So y-intercept is 3. I'm wondering if the green will show up. For the most part, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to start with black and then maybe shade with green, though. So here, y-intercept of 3, and then we have to go down by 2 and over by 1. So down by 2, over by 1. Down by 2, over by 1. And so on and so forth. And then this one, because it has that equal to symbol underneath it, we are going to be able to fill it in with a solid line, not just a dotted line and we are going to be able to shade from this point forward. So here, we are going to, I'm going to take the first one, the first thing we graph, that, saw, that uh, dash line, and it says greater than. If it says greater than, you have to shade up, and up is where on this line would be above it, and if you don't know which one's up or down, you can think where can you climb, or where would you fall off if it was a mountain? And you can climb on this side of the mountain, over here where I'm at. So I'm going to shade everything above that, or I'm going to highlight it. Highlighting's good. Highlight, 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 highlight. Everything there. And then I have my other line where I also am supposed to shade above. It says y is greater than or equal to the negative 2x plus 3, so I have to shade above that line. Well, this line, the side I would be above would be over here. This would be the above. And your official answer is where these are overlap. So if you don't like things being messy, you might want to do a little bit of the shading in their head because the only part that should be really included in the answer is where they overlap, which is this area right there where we have that triangle. That was where they were overlapped. That's where the blue and the green both were shaded. And that is officially the answer. All right. So I'm moving on to uh, number three. Number three, everyone. So in number three, we have two equations. One of them is y is less than three. That is a very boring equation. We plot a point at three, dot, and it is going to be a dashed line here that is dashed because we do not have the equal to symbol. And it's straight horizontal because that's where y is equal to three. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we go. Next one, we have a y-intercept of 1, and it has a slope of negative 1. So I'm plotting my point here for 1. And then I'm going to have to go down 1 over 1 because the slope is negative 1 over 1. That's the number technically in front of the x. So down 1 over 1 dot, down 1 over 1 dot, down 1 over 1 dot. You don't need that many dots. But if you want to, you can keep going in the opposite direction as well. 
connect these dots with a solid line because it has the equal to symbol underneath. And then we get the shade. And you could shade at any point, but I like to shade at the end. So here we had y is less than 3, so that was the horizontal one, and we would shade down, which is very easy to see where down is. It's everything below that line. And here we have y is less than or equal to negative x plus 1, and we would need to shade down again. So if I shade below this line, technically it would be everything over here, but where's that overlap? The overlap is this chunk right there, where we went from the cut off there point all the way down on the left side. All of that would be where it's overlapping, and all of that would be included in the answer. Okay? A few more. A few, few more. This is an easier lesson because we've already graphed regular equations, and this is not changing much. It's, it's just adding shading, essentially. Number five. We got x is less than negative 3. So that one is a vertical line. It's solid vertical because it can equal the negative 3. And this is where x is less than negative 3. And then this other equation is going to be a little more annoying because it's not solved for y. We have to take that 5x plus 3y is greater than or equal to negative 9, and I have to solve for y. i got to subtract the 5x over, get the y by itself, 3y greater than or equal to negative 5x minus 9, and then divide by 3. And remember, if you divide it by a negative number, we would have to flip the inequality sign. We're dividing by positive 3 right here, so we're not going to flip the inequality symbol. But if we did, we would have to. Negative 5 over 3x minus 3, because 9 divided by 3 is 3. Negative 3, specifically, in this case. So, to reiterate, I subtracted the 5, and then I divided by the 3, 5x. And we didn't combine the 5x or the 9, because they are not like terms. So, from here, we have a y-intercept of negative 3, and a slope of down by 5 and over by 3, which encounters a problem. We don't really have enough room to go down by 5 and over by 3. Like, you could fake it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. And if you don't have enough room on one side, you can go the other direction. But when you go the other direction, you have to make sure that it's the complete opposite. So my recommendation is start by actually going off the graph. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right by 3. And know that you're going to connect these two in some way like this, right? But we want to be kind of accurate on this portion of the graph, where we actually have. So I've just kind of really lightly scratched that in. But on this side, I want to go up by 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the other direction by 3. 1, 2, 3. So I went up 5, other direction by 3. And that looks like it would make the original line that I had off the graph. And thank goodness it's a solid line because I wasn't paying attention. It is a solid line because it has the equal to symbol there. And there's my solid graph. Now we get the shape. So this first one, x is less than or equal to negative 3. Um, there's no up or down for this. You have to physically think, where are smaller numbers, do you think? On the left side or the right side, because i got to shade 1. And if you think really hard, and maybe not even hard at all, you'd realize that negative numbers are um, on the left side. This is only, only to be done for straight up and down vertical lines. Everything else you shade up or down. Everything else you shade up or down. If it's a, only a vertical line and that's all you have to go with, you shade to the left or the right. And smaller numbers are to the left. So we are going to shade here for smaller than, less than points to the left. And then we have our other equation, which I would recommend looking at your y equals mx plus b version of it, which would be greater than or equal to. I would not look at the original. I would look at this one, because this is the one we officially kind of graphed. And here we shade up. So I need to shade up on this line, because we are always shading up or down unless we are forced to do the left or the right. 
And then we look at where they overlap. In this case, uh, there's not a lot of space where they overlap, is there? It's all only green here. It's all only blue there. So it's overlapping right in that little itty bitty tiny corner. So this area is the official solution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I got one more for you. One more for you. This one right here, or this one right here. Which one looks harder? I think seven slightly harder because it's easier, which sounds wrong. But sometimes the easy problems are the ones that trip people up. So on this one, both of them the, uh, are not in y equals mx plus b. So they get the root award. We have to take the x plus y greater than 2 and solve for y. We have to take the 2x minus y greater than 1 and solve for y. We have to do it for both of them. Uh, and the first one's not going to be that bad because you can just subtract x. And it's done. Y is greater than negative x plus 2. So I can graph that. This next one, I have to do a little bit more work. I have to subtract the 2x and get negative y is greater than negative 2x and 1. I write what I see because they are not like terms. And I still do not have y by itself. That negative y is not by itself. That negative y is a negative 1. And because negative 1, we have to divide by negative 1 and divide by negative 1 and divide by negative 1. And we would get, essentially, y, we divided by a negative, flip the inequality symbol, 2 over 1, you can write 2x though, minus 1. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So that's why I wanted to do this one, because dividing by negative 1 is funky sometimes. So first off, we divide by a negative. Make sure any time you divide by a negative, you flip that inequality symbol. And negative 2 divided by negative 1 is 2. You can write 2 over 1 if you want your rise over run. And 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So I'm going to graph both of these, that one and that one, starting with negative x plus 2 has a y-intercept of positive 2 and a slope of negative 1x, so down 1, right by 1, and this one would need to be a dashed or a dotted line, so make sure you're not filling it in. I already got the dots going there, but there it would look. That would be what it would look like. And then this one, the next one, the last one, is a y-intercept of negative 1. So we have a negative 1 for the y-intercept and a slope of positive 2 over 1, which is why I like keeping this as a fraction, so you know it's up by 2 over by 1. You can write 2x, though. Up by 2 over by 1. Up by 2 over by 1. Up by 2 over by 1. And again, it is a dashed line. So dash this line. And there it is. We need to shade. Shading, shading. So this one... This is the original y is greater than negative x plus 2. And I need to shade up from that black line. So if I shade it up lightly, just kind of cross hatch it in. And this is also a technique if you don't have colored pencils. You can go one direction for one and then the other direction for the other. So if I were shading this one, the next graph, it'd be y is less than the 2x minus 1. I would need to shade below that. So if I went the opposite direction, here I went the kind of sideways, if I went the opposite direction, where you get the crisscross is where they actually overlap. So here is where they crisscrossed. We only have one direction, we only have one direction. Where is the blizzard happening and it's going both direction? That would be right here. So that would be the official solution and the conclusion of this video. So, uh, I encourage you guys to stay positive, keep focused, and do your best. Until next time, I will see y'all later. Bye.